If you watch my other MongoDB videos and found yourself asking, Nick, I really don't want to get Compass set up. I don't want to deal with Atlas and all this other stuff. I just want to be able to start playing around with MongoDB. Or perhaps you're already interested in MongoDB and you're trying to write tests and have things working locally, this video is going to be for you. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to be looking at using test containers to set up and run MongoDB instances locally in Docker containers. If you get comfortable using test containers, it's a super awesome way to have stuff running locally to play around with. And of course, if you're interested in testing, as the name suggests, you can spin up these containers for different dependencies and have them operate alongside your tests. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. And with that said, let's jump over to the code and check this out. So I like to start off with the dependencies that we're going to use here. So we have two NuGet packages for this example. We're going to leverage we're going to have mongodb driver which is what we've been using in the previous videos that i put out on this this is going to be the nuget package that gives us the classes where we can connect to a mongodb database and do things like read write and all the other fancy stuff that you would ever want to do with a mongodb database the other package that we have here is test containers and then the mongodb flavor of it so when you grab this it will get the base test container stuff that you need to use as well so you can just grab this mongodb test containers nuget package here the other thing that you're going to want to have is docker installed on your computer so i have docker desktop running if i don't have this running when we go to execute the code it's going to have issues trying to spin up Docker containers because there's nothing listening to be able to spin up those containers for us. Now, this might seem like it's a little bit complicated, but once we have this running, we don't have to worry about anything. And I'm sure there's headless versions of this that you could be going to run. So even for me, I can go collapse this and minimize it and not have to see the user interface. But I'm not familiar with a lot of the different ways that you can go run Docker. I always just kind of have this running in the background somewhere. And when I don't ever want to see it, I just close it and have it minimized to the taskbar. So you can look into this more, especially if you're doing test runs and you don't want to have a user interface running on the computer. But for me, this is just the only thing that I had to install for Docker to be working on my computer and it's just docker desktop you can see in the top left here so i'm gonna pull this up later when we start running these examples and that way you can see what's going on when we go to execute this okay and now to look at some code i've just zoomed out a little bit further so you can see that this is an entire program that's going to get a container spun up and torn down for us automatically we're going to be able to connect to that database, insert a document, and read it back. That's all fitting on the screen right now. And then we'll go through it in a little bit more detail here. So to start with, in order to get a MongoDB container started up for us, we just use the code from line six to nine here to get the container created. You can see that I'm using a MongoDB builder, and then we can ask for the specific image that we want to use for that Docker instance. If I just use Mongo colon latest, it's always going to pull down the latest version of the MongoDB container. There are lots of other customization options that we can use on this builder pattern. So if you wanted to explicitly set the ports, you can do that. There's lots of other things you can configure, but just to keep things simple, I'm just going to use dot build to build the container we're not even going to ask for any explicit port binding here because we don't have to in our instance we can just run it and it's going to work automatically for us which is super cool so once we create that container you can see on line 10 we go and start it there's a start async method that we can call so there's a nice async api for us to use and from there what's awesome about this is that the container is up and running we don't have to do anything else magical to get it to work this will start it up and then we can start to use it basically right after after. So I'm going to show you from line 12 and onward that we can start to use the MongoDB driver NuGet package just to be able to get a client, ask for the database, and then start working with the collection. Because at this point, we don't even need to be dealing and worrying about the container running because on line 12, we can ask the container itself for the connection string. In my opinion, this is one of the most powerful parts, and that's why we don't have to worry about setting up a specific port or doing anything else. We can just ask the container once it's up and running, give me the connection string to MongoDB that's inside of the container that's running and it gives it to us no other fancy magic that has to happen 
and we get a MongoDB client that can talk to MongoDB in that container. So that's what's happening on line 12. From there onward, line 13 and 14, we're just going to get a test database and create a collection. So when we ask for this collection called test, what we're doing at that point is basically saying, give us the collection or we're going to create one after this when we start interacting with it. And maybe I'll give these slightly more unique names so there's no confusion about what's happening here. So I'll call this test DB and this one will be test collection. So now we have those two as unique names uh, just so that you don't think they have to be the same. Now from here, I'm going to insert a document. It's going to be just a very basic JSON document that has a single property in it called name. And I'm going to assign the name Nick Cosentino just because I'm very not creative and that's my own name. So nice and simple. <laughs> from there, we're going to ask the collection to find a document and we're just going to give it an empty filter. If you haven't watched my previous videos on this, uh, I explain how you can go create more complex filters and an or them together. But in this case, there's only one document. If we pass it an empty filter, it should match on anything and everything. And because there's only one document, we can get away with calling this and getting that single document back. From there, I'm just going to write to the console that we found it. And then we can use dispose async on this container and wait to see what we get. So technically that's less than 30 lines of code with some console write lines and some comments and some spacing in the code as well. So not a lot of code to be able to get up and running with a local database. It's important to note that when you close this off, it will tear down the entire database. You lose everything. But I'm pretty sure that if you wanted to do something a little bit more interesting and persist data, that there are some settings that you can use with this. But I'm not doing that. In all of my testing, I never do that because I just want to have a a very isolated instance of MongoDB or other services running. So with that all said and out of the way, let's go run this, see what it does, because I want to prove to you that it really is this easy to be able to have a local instance of Mongo running and start working with it. We'll do a quick check in Docker Desktop to see that I have nothing running here. I go back and press play and I want to pull up Docker desktop as well while this starts. You can start to see these two containers spin up in the back. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. Uh, test containers is printing all this other stuff to the console. So if you recall in the code I wrote, I did not have this many console write lines, but I did have this found document line. So you can see that we ended up finding that document that we inserted. And when we write that to the console, it just has this object ID and this name that I set, the object ID itself is built in. That's not something I sent manually. It's just built in when we go to write. And then beyond that, I have press enter to exit. That's the only other line that I wrote. Um, this delete Docker container gets printed when we start to dispose of things. Now you'll notice too that we still have one of these two containers running. And you might also be asking, well, why were two containers running, right? We said, let's get a MongoDB container spun up. What the heck is this other one? Well, the way that this ends up working behind the scenes is that they have another container to be able to monitor the processes that are running. And that way they can close things off when you don't need to use it anymore. So if I go ahead back here, if I press enter to exit, close all of this off, we should start to see that this goes away because there's nothing else to be running. And there we go. After a few seconds, it clears away. I didn't take any other action aside from closing down my process. And this same behavior happens when you're using tests from Visual Studio. So if you spin up tests, they're using test containers, MongoDB, or some other container that you want to go run. When your tests all finish off, these containers will all close out. You don't have to do any manual cleanup. And I did mention that if you wanted to be writing tests with MongoDB, that test containers is an awesome way that you can go do this. But what are other use cases aside from just playing around locally or running tests? Well, another situation is going to be with running benchmarks. So if you're interested in seeing that when this video is ready, you can watch it here next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.